vaccine hesitancy by eligible Nigerians. Correspondent examines issues surrounding the myths. Kaduna State rolls out 180,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine as state government sensitizes citizens to embrace the exercise. Plus, federal government empowers youths in Nasrao states to stem the tide of unemployment. Glad to have you join us on this week's edition of The Correspondence. We have stories that will watch your world. I am Amina Baba Suleiman. You're welcome. begin with the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines in Kaduna states. With the supply of 180,000 doses of vaccine to Kaduna states being administered to the citizens, the level of acceptability appears high even as the state government continues to stress the need for people to embrace the initiative that will bring an end to the pandemic. Correspondent Mohammed Umar Ajingi brings us up to speed with the progress of vaccination in the states. The delivery of these vaccines marks a turning point in the fight against COVID-19 in Kaduna State. Government hopes to vaccinate all residents, beginning with frontline health workers and strategic leaders, including the state governor. You know, we are prioritizing the vaccination of teachers, for instance, so that all the schools will open. Uh, we are prioritizing uh, civil servants because they interact uh, with, with, with people. So, we're, But in the end, everyone is supposed to get the vaccine and is free. By the time a large percentage of the population is, in, is, 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 is vaccinated, we can open up completely. We can, uh, you know, remove most of the restrictions. We recommend that you wear a mask as much as possible. Um, but according to a guideline by Centers for Disease Control of the U.S., if all of you are vaccinated, you can even meet in a group without, without masks because you're all vaccinated. But if you're going into a place where you don't know if everyone has been vaccinated, it is advisable you wear your mask. So mask wearing will continue. Uh, social distances it will be recommended. But if everyone is vaccinated, our lives will begin to go back to normal. Records show that the exercise is being carried out across the, the country three local government areas of the state of, uh, without any uh, Here in Kaduna State, we received 179,830 doses of our surgical COVID vaccine. As of now, we have immunized almost 72,000 people of Kaduna State, which include the healthcare workers, security personnel, and some strategic leaders in the state. That's almost we are getting to our 50 percent uh, doses of the vaccines that we should have done so that at least we can continue with the second dose at least after eight weeks of receiving the first dose. Our target is to immunize uh, uh, half of these doses, that's almost 90,000 doses, 90,000 people in the state. That would give us to almost, if we multiply by two, uh, that is around 179,000 doses. Pharmacist Charles, who is in charge of the vaccines, says Kaduna State has adequate storage facility for its safe keep. The COVID-19 vaccine also is kept here. So as you can see at the, your bag, we have different type of quorums. We have the one that is negative. That is the one that will allow vaccines that could stay f uh, from minus zero down to 35. Then we all ha we'll also have the other one that will maintain two to eight. And that is where the brand of vaccine that we got, which is the... COVID shield, a brand of AstraZeneca that is produced in India, is kept is the plus two to eight. Kaduna State has the capacity to store the vaccine for the whole country, not just for Kaduna State, because we have been conducting a um, polio campaign and we have received in the state vaccines that the whole country needs in terms of the COVID-19. So Kaduna State does, don't, have, does, don't just have the, the capacity to, main, to, to receive or maintain the COVID-19 vaccines that came in, but how they have to, to contain the vaccine that will come in for the whole country. Because as you can see, these are working columns all around and a larger capacity. All the three zonal offices that is in Kaduna, Zaria and Kampanchan, we have a cold store where we buy, we keep our vaccine. And the, the wisdom of Kaduna has already built another back up store, store for the vaccine in Kachia and Ikara local government areas in order to see that we don't have problem of vaccine storage in the state. So we don't have any problem related to vaccine storage in Kaduna State. 
as the vaccination continues, the state looks forward to getting more doses for the vaccination of others who are yet to take the jab. That's great news, Mohammed. It's good to know that Kaduna residents are responding positively to the vaccination. This will indeed reduce the spread of the pandemic soon. And thanks a lot. Still on COVID-19, the discovery of vaccine against the virus could be a possible solution to the pandemic, given its safety and benefits as confirmed by experts. Countries across the globe have continued to roll out vaccine to citizens and here in Nigeria. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine was greeted with mixed reaction. Correspondent Salwa Khalil Ibrahim X-ray the issues surrounding COVID-19 hesitancy occasioned by myths, misconceptions, and panic among citizenry. Vaccines are established as one of the most effective public health interventions for disease prevention. However, Nigeria is a country with history of vaccine hesitancy. In the face of COVID-19 comes the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which was developed after a rigorous research and clinical trials. Safety and potency confirmed and subsequent authorization by WHO and Nigeria's health regulatory bodies. Yet, some Nigerians are beclouded by myth, misconceptions and panic about the vaccine, hence the attendant hesitancy. My WhatsApp group, a couple of my uh, colleagues were talking about the side effects. Like, it even affect the respiratory system. But I'm not sure about that. It's what I saw. Sorry. So I haven't taken the vaccine yet, but I'm kind of scared of the side effects. So I want to see the outcome for those who have taken it. For now, I'm COVID free. Meanwhile, I visited one of the COVID 19 vaccination centers in Abuja where I was told that they record between 70 to 100 clients daily. I also met Adeniyi, who is rendering assistance as a volunteer in the clinic. Well, one of the advantages, major advantages, is that if you take the vaccine, you will not be critically ill. So what I've tried to use this opportunity to do is to sensitize people, tell them to communicate to their colleagues, family members, relatives. It is what we've hoped for when the thing was eating everyone. So now that it's out, we have no choice than to just come and take it because it's for preventing ourselves from the virus. About 100 countries have since begun administering the vaccine, with over 40 million people vaccinated globally, including over 1 million people in Nigeria. Authorities say there has not been any reported case of side effect from the vaccine. If we don't vaccinate, what happens is that the epidemic is going to continue. It is going to uh, be transmitted from one person to another from one individual to their family, to the communities, and to the entire uh, people in the country. And it has devastating consequences because we know about 10% of people who become infected will end up in hospital admissions. Uh, and some of them can even um, uh, die from, from it. So th that is why uh, we need to vaccinate. We need to ensure that we uh, encourage everyone to do it. We are happy uh, we have not dealt with uh, this issue uh, of expiration of, of vaccine. But yes, um, we, and even when we were given some of the vaccines that had short expiry dates, um, we actually, we politely declined. We encourage people to report those uh, symptoms and signs that they have noted. And these symptoms are actually transmitted to us so far Based on the information um, we have received, there is no documentation of any serious, severe side effect that is directly related to Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Transmission of the coronavirus continues across the globe, just as the current devastating effect seen in India, with other countries, including Nigeria, at risk. Meanwhile, Nigeria is set to begin the rollout of the second dose of the vaccine and subsequent continuation of the vaccination exercise, which could be the most effective antidote to the virus, hence the need for the citizenry to come forward for the jab.
Joining us to speak further on the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy is NTA Health correspondent Salwa Khalil Ibrahim. You're welcome to the program, Salwa. Many hey, thanks, Amina. Thank you for having me. And now let's begin. Yeah. 58.3% vaccination of eligible Nigerian is said to be low. Why are the Nigerian hesitant about taking the vaccine? Okay, yes, like you said, that is very low, which, uh, you know, even according to authorities, that is a far cry from what is expected. And don't forget, we've seen this played out even during the polio, uh, you know, vaccination a few years back. Yeah. But gladly, we've seen, uh, we've overcome that. And I think that is what is playing out now with the COVID-19 vaccination. And I think this is attributed to lack of trust among the citizens, you know. But gladly, I think we we are going to overcome this. Really? Okay, um, there was a rumor about the side effects from Nigerians. Were the rumors unfounded? Very much unfounded from what I gathered mm. from experts. Uh, you know, social media, let me say this, plays a big role in uh, misinformation and spreading rumor. And like you said, of course, there are rumors. You know, I've even heard someone mm. who said he's waiting to see what will happen to us <laughs> before he takes it. <laughs> so a lot of Nigerians are waiting to see what will happen. You know, like I said earlier, lack of trust you know, in this whole system. And then, um, to a large extent, I think there is no enough advocacy. You know, people are even saying that is a chip that is implanted in human beings, you know, mm -hmm. yes, to control population, all sort of things which are very, very unfounded. Let's not forget that this has gone through rigorous, rigorous, you know, assessment, research, before it was even authorized by the World Health Organization, even here in Nigeria, you know, NAVDAC and various uh, regulatory agencies have endorsed this vaccine, let's not forget, before it's even uh, carried out. And we've seen many countries have deployed the use of this vaccine. So there is no excuse whatsoever for people not to take this vaccine, even though the rumor goes on. But, we, you know, we owe it to ourselves. Let's not forget, this is a pandemic. We are even seeing what is happening in India now. Yes. So we have no excuse whatsoever. And like you said, these are very unfounded. I've spoken to a lot of experts who have debunked these rumors. So we are safe. I'm sure we are safe. You've taken the vaccine, I'm oh, sure. sure yes. <laughs> and so we are still here what today. What's happening in India is not about the vaccine. Uh, not really. I wouldn't say that. You know, many countries are taking the vaccine. And even with the vaccine, the spread still goes on. The non-pharmaceutical majors is the safest and surest way. Mm -hmm. You know, that has been said over and over again. We should wear our face masks, you know, observe hygiene, mm -hmm. social distancing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, what is happening in India, we can't compare it to here in Nigeria. Nigeria. Of course, here in Nigeria, we've seen uh, the numbers have been controlled. The numbers of infection mm -hmm. have, is now, you know, stable. Really it's now stable, low. But... That is not to say that Nigeria we cannot be on that path. God forbid, of course. <laughs> so we need to be careful. We need to be careful. India, of course, the fact that you've taken the, the, vaccine. the vaccine doesn't mean, you know, 100% that you won't be infected. Yeah. Okay. But like we said, it's a vaccination, you know. So, we, yes, we should all take the vaccine. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, Salwa, federal government has embarked on campaigns to sensitize Nigerians on the need to embrace the vaccine. Do you think the campaign are yielding positive results? Yes, uh, partly I think it is yielding results. It might not be enough for now. But uh, we've seen uh, the target audience for now mm -hmm. yeah, is the frontline workers. And uh, to some extent, you know, that has been met. And uh, it's been confirmed that even in some states, the vaccination exercise is going to be halted for the second phase to begin. Now, the advocacy is still going on, let's not forget. Okay. It's still going on, and it's, it's supposed to be a continuous process. And as we go on, I think there is going to be a lot of acceptance. Okay. And I think we need to raise the tempo in 
the advocacy. I think government still has to do a lot. You and I still have to do a lot in advocating, in spreading the right information on why people need to take the vaccine. Okay, Salwa, and lastly, what is the level of preparedness for the second dose of the vaccine? Yes, uh, preparations are on top gear. Like I said, uh, there has been a, uh, the issue of vaccination has been halted in some state okay. for some unconfirmed reason. That is what I've been told, okay. you know, for the second phase to take place. And uh, let me say here too that uh, some people were even saying the vaccines are expired. That is very, very, very untrue. It's been confirmed. Nigeria has gone officials, not just even, mm -hmm. you know, that it was shipped here. Okay. Several uh, officials have gone out to uh, the Oxford uh, company okay. to confirm this before it was even brought okay. in here. So all plans have been made and plans are underway now for the second phase of the vaccine, even though not definite date has not yet been set, but preparations are on top gear for the second phase. Wow. Thanks a lot, Salwa, for being part of the correspondence this week. And we hope to see you again soon. Certainly. Very intense. Uh, thank you for having me, Amina. Industrial Training Fund empowers youth for self-reliance. That's after the break. Join us again on the correspondence. The coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has been declared by the World Health Organization as a global pandemic. While clinical trials are ongoing for a vaccine and a possible cure, there is no known treatment for the coronavirus. Nigeria has recorded some of these cases and people are advised to take these preventive measures to keep themselves safe and contain the further spread of the virus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use hand sanitizers all the time. Maintain social distancing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Do not panic. Stop the spread of unconfirmed news. Follow the official government news outlets and report all cases immediately. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. You're still watching The Correspondence. Let's take you to Nasrallah State, where the federal government has made efforts to tackle the menace of unemployment. As the concern for the growing population of unemployed youths in the country persists, there is, however, concerted efforts by the federal government to address the situation through many programs. It is against this background that the Industrial Training Fund has provided start-up kits to more than 100 youths as a means of empowerment after graduating from its vocational training in Nasrallah State. Abigail Bashi has more. After months of training in tailoring, cosmetology, and ICT, the graduates were presented startup kits to set up a business. Despite the disruptions caused by COVID-19 pandemic, more than 5,000 youths across the country benefited in the last badge of the 2020 National Industrial Skills Development Program. Representative of the Director General, Industrial Training Fund, and Area Manager, Lafia Branch, Engineer Garba Hassan said the agency will continue to do its best to unveil the potentials of Nigerian youths through its empowerment programs. He explained that the agency has commenced processes for the implementation of more initiatives to also benefit the physically challenged and women. Since the inception, the NICP has equipped 
Over 200,000 Nigeria nationwide and 105 train in Nasarawa, in your state here, Nasarawa State. The training lasted between one, three, and six months, depending upon the three trade area. In line with the federal government's poverty reduction initiative, Representative of Natural State Governor and Commissioner for Youth and Sports Development, Otnambala Adam, identified skills acquisition as a step towards reducing unemployment and assured of government's commitment to partner with the agency to ensure that natural youths assess skills and working capital to support their businesses. We are taking the necessary steps to ensure that our state is not left behind in equipping the youth with requisite skills for civil reliance and sustainability. I believe that this effort will turn the fortune of a number of the beneficiaries and even beyond of this program, another intervention program being implemented by the ITF. I want to seize this opportunity to all the NII, to, ITF, to all the ITF management not to relent, but continue to train more Nigerians and by so doing, ek the name of the organization in gold. For the graduates, the experience game is worthwhile and promised to make judicious use of the items. I learned so many things about it and I'm trying to start up a business because I have the certificate with me. I will try the business to make more money for myself, for people around me. A very big thank you to ITF, the state government, for this wonderful initiative because it was really amazing. Who believed that a guy would be part of um, cosmetology? Well, here I am. And I'm a graduate now, and I'm being offered certificate. And I hope that in the future, I'll be able to make use of it to develop people. I just wanted to acquire a skill because if you look at it in our present society, the jobs out there and the number of graduates, they are not equal. So we need to acquire skills to be able to help ourselves, to empower ourselves, and then give back to the society at large. In the first week, I was like, sorry, lockdown time was like not giving them much time like that. I do on and off. I come once like a week. But the coordinator, when the coordinator encourages us, he gives us the word of encouragement then that a lot of people uh, exhaust through hand walking and some stuff like that due to some like the our economic predicament now. I am really, really happy and very, very excited. Seriously, I learned a lot. Stakeholders call for sustained efforts to support entrepreneurship to create wealth and improve the economy. Yes, Abigail, entrepreneurship is the currency globally. The earlier the youth embrace it for economic development, the better for the society. And that's the correspondence this week. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again next week, same time. Don't forget to follow our Twitter handle at FUOLUANTA, hashtag NTA correspondence. You can use the hashtag correspondence whenever you make a comment or ask a question. And a quick reminder that COVID-19 is still around us. Continue to adhere to COVID-19 prevention protocols, and more importantly, get vaccinated. Take responsibility and stay safe. Bye for now.